Hi everyone and welcome to chemistry lesson number seven of the periodic table. Uh, okay, so we're going to learn a bit more about the peri periodic table and we'll watch a video as well. But first, before I begin, I just wanted to do a shout out to Atar. Thank you so much, Atar. I got your, I, I got your scans of your homework um, and I just encourage everyone else also, uh, gather together several lessons as you finish them off uh, and then take pictures or if you need to get your parents to take a picture on their phone and then get them to email me back your finished work, okay, if you're able to. Again, no stress with these lessons, just try your best to keep up, but just take your time lesson by lesson as you go through. OK, another thing is that something that might be stressful for all of you, uh, several of you, is that you don't have printers at home. OK, so um, Miss Kelson and Mr. Hewlett uh, at school, they are working their way through and I sent them a package of handouts. They're going to help to print them out, photocopy them and then send them to your homes by mail. OK, so please look for that and then hopefully that will alleviate some of the stress um, as you try to figure out what to do. OK. And the next thing is that we were working a little bit quickly in the first week. Now we can kind of slow it down because we know that the minister has told us to do three hours of lessons per class per week. OK, so what I want you to do is we can start the periodic table lesson today, but feel free as you get tired or, you know, your your hand is hurting or whatever. Take a little break. OK, after working maybe uh, half an hour or something like that, uh, take a break and then you can finish this off actually tomorrow. OK, so there will not be a new lesson posted tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be generally doing a Monday, Wednesday and Friday post of uh, lessons, except for when there are holidays. OK, then I I might shift things around a little bit. Okay, so let's just begin uh, and warm up on the peri periodic table by watching this YouTube video about the genius of Mendeleev's periodic table. Okay, when you finish watching it, come back and see me. Oh, and the, uh, the links are in the YouTube video's description box or info box, and it's also on your PDF files. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. I just think it's so cool that uh, Mendeleev was able to predict uh, elements that were not even discovered yet and he knew very, very precisely or quite accurately what some of those properties of those unknown elements were even before they were even discovered. Okay, so really cool. That's what science can do. If you have a scientific process and you follow it, you can actually make some really, really good hypotheses as we've learned in class. Okay, next up, uh, this is also linked in the YouTube videos description box. So over here, we've got alternative periodic tables. Okay. So we are very much used to Mendeleev's periodic table. This is the one that everyone is quite familiar with and that you see quite a bit in textbooks or on websites. But did you know that there are actually a lot of alternative periodic tables? So these periodic tables are different in that they emphasize different properties. So the elements are lined up in a, in a different way because it emphasizes different properties that are alike or similar. OK, so this is uh, Theodore Benfey's periodic table. OK, this is like uh, SFD block. OK, this is an, another type of periodic table. Uh, the Adoma periodic table, it's, it's actually related with the electron configurations. So the way electrons are positioned. Uh, this is Mendeleev's periodic table that you also saw in the video, how he kind of organized things in the beginning spiral periodic table, ring of periodic table elements, curled ribbon periodic table. Okay, really cool, right? Circular periodic table, alternative circular periodic table, and there's a divide right here. I'm not sure exactly what, to be honest, I don't know very much about these periodic tables, but I just know that they are, um, they are uh, organized according to different properties. Spiral periodic table. Uh, this is Mendeleev's flower, flower periodic table. So the idea here is that um, it's actually circular. So even though your periodic table might lay flat, uh, just like a globe, if you see a map of the world, it lays flat and it looks like there's a left and a right and a beginning and an end. However, the, it's supposed to be three dimensional to portray the fact that it goes and continues. Uh, for example, there are some, some properties that probably are circular right here. 
binary electron shell, Stowe periodic table, Bailey, and I can't pronounce that. Okay, so here we go. This is pyramidal, so I think this is kind of like 3D and it goes upwards towards the top. Uh, this, some of the PRI tables that I've seen are actually like a 3D uh, chess match sort of a layout. So some of these things might be overlaying on top of each other to also represent the fact that uh, there are different properties that are lining up in different ways. Okay, same thing with this one, maybe 4D, four dimensional. Okay, anyways, I hope that's kind of cool just because we are so used to seeing this type of periodic table. Okay, so if you can please uh, take out your periodic table, we're going to add some notes to this, okay? So the idea here is that we're going to learn about groups and periods, okay? So groups go vertically, they go like columns, okay? So what I would like you to do is just take out your pen or pencil and start adding some different marks here, okay? So G1 would be here. Uh, this would be G2, G3, G4. This is period one, period two. Sorry, I'll change that in a few moments. Period three, four, five, okay? So please, everyone, uh, take out some pencils and follow along with me. I'm just going to fast forward um, and pause my video. I'm going to mark it all up, and then you can catch up with me after that. So what you'll notice is that groups are vertical columns. So groups go this way. Okay, so they're columns going down this way. Okay, and then they just go one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to group 18. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing for the periods, which go this way. So this is period one. This is period two going this way. Okay, so here's P1 through P7. Don't worry about the bottom ones right over here, okay? Um, we, we won't discuss them too much, to be honest. Okay, and so notice that groups go, go vertically. They are like columns, and then periods go horizontally, okay? Now, these groups are grouped according to their properties, and so you'll notice that if you were to study these elements, Everything in this row is very, very reactive. So for example, when you put lithium into water or sodium into water or potassium into water, they all react, okay? And as you go through here, they react more and more violently as you go up to the larger atoms. Okay, the other thing I just wanna mention here is that there is a staircase and it may or may not be very obvious in your periodic table. So please take a marker or just take your pencil and kind of bold this line. The left of this chart of the periodic table are all metals, okay? And then the right of the chart uh, of the periodic table are all uh, element, uh, non, non metals, sorry, okay? So this line separates them. These are called metals, these are non metals. And actually, there's a bunch of these that are just kind of touching this staircase or, uh, yeah, staircase line. And those are called metalloids. Metalloids, if everyone can say that, repeat after me, metalloids. Okay, so metalloids have properties of both metals and non-metals, okay? So not aluminum though, okay, but but some of the ones that are kind of close by to this line, okay? So please also bold this line just because it separates the metals on the left-hand side and the non-metals on the right-hand side. Uh, one more thing I just wanna mention is that this, I really like this periodic table because it's very clear and it also has a good legend, okay? So if it has a little cube like this, these ones all over here, it means that they are solid at room temperature. So the majority of these elements are all solid, as you can see, okay? Uh, if it has a little raindrop, it means that it's liquid at room temperature. And as we've, as we've learned from before, bromine and mercury, which is like quicksilver, um, that metallic silvery uh, metal, those are the only two items in the per periodic table that are liquid at room temperature. And then there, if there is a cloud, that means it's a gas at room temperature. So you'll notice that all of these ones here are gases on the right hand side, okay? And also hydrogen. We know that hydrogen is also in gas form. Uh, next up, if it has this radioactive symbol, it means that it's radioactive, right? So we, we learned about uranium and we learned about plutonium, okay? Those are both radioactive things that um, we can do atomic bombs with or we have nuclear energy from, okay? And then lastly, there is a person of a person, there's a legend of a person right here, okay? This means that they were artificially made in a computer lab, okay, right over here. These ones right over here, okay? Even plutonium is man-made. 
Okay, kind of cool. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so let's get on with our lesson, lesson number 14, just according to the handouts. What is the periodic table of elements? Okay, so let's just go through some key terms. These are like vocabulary words. So the periodic table is a chart of all known elements. A period is a row, so it goes across, okay, the periodic table. The group, a group is a column, which means it goes up and down. Or sometimes, rather than calling it a group, they call it a family on the periodic table because they have very, very similar characteristics. Metals are elements that are found on the left side. So elements that are on the left side are metals and they all share properties. And then the non-metals are elements that are found on the right side of the, of the periodic table. Okay, let's read this together, okay? So please read with me um, and try to see if you can sound out these words along with me. By the mid 1800s, 60 elements were known. Elements had quite a bit of, sorry, scientists had quite a bit of information about these elements, but the information wasn't organized, so it wasn't very useful. In 1869, a Russian scientist, scientist named Dmitry Mendeleev made a chart of the known elements. Since that time, more elements have been discovered and added to the chart. The chart is called the periodic table of elements. Every country uses the same periodic table. In the periodic table, elements are arranged in order of their atomic numbers. With a couple of exceptions, atomic numbers are in the same order as atomic masses. That is, the lightest element has the lowest atomic number. The heaviest element has the highest atomic number. That might be something worth highlighting right there, okay? Look at the periodic table on page 81. Hydrogen has an atomic number of one. It is the lightest element. Aluminum, Al, has the atomic number of 13. Only 12 elements are lighter than aluminum. Okay, so rather than looking on page 81, let's just look at this, okay? So hydrogen is right here. This is the atomic number one. And then he also talked, to, the, the handout also talks about aluminum and it's number 13, that's the atomic number. Each row across, going this way, the periodic table is called a period. All the elements listed in a row belong to the same period. There are seven periods. Okay, so let's just take a look at that. Here are seven periods, periods one through seven right there. Each column, so columns go up and down. Okay, each column in the periodic table is called a group. Okay, or family of elements. All of the elements in a group have many similar properties. So when they are in a group together, they have similar properties. Each group is identified by a number. For example, the column of elements at the left side of the table is group one. Okay, so what are they referring to? Right over here, the left side of the table, here is group one. This whole column is group one, okay? Elements can be divided into two types, metals and non-metals. There are more metals than non-metals. In the periodic table, metals are on the left, so metals left, non-metals on the right. A heavy step-like line separates the metals from the non-metals. Hydrogen is in two places in the periodic table because it can act as a metal or a non-metal, okay? On our periodic periodic table, it only appears on the left-hand side, so it's kind of like put in the same place as all the metals, okay? But that's okay. Okay, so here we go. Uh, you may want to add in the step case right over here as well. You may want to copy that down. Okay, so let's take a look at some questions here. Uh, answer the questions about the periodic table. Uh, the complete periodic table at the end of the book will tell you about the names of the elements, okay? Or you can just look at the periodic table that I've done. Okay, so list the periods. So if you remember, how many periods were there and how many groups were there? So there are 
seven periods and take a look at how many groups there are. There are 18 groups. Okay, so, so there are seven periods and there are 18 groups. List the name, symbol, and atomic number of each element in period three. Okay, so let's look that up. Let's go back to our good periodic table. So we're looking for period three. What does that mean? It means that we are going to go all the way across here and keep going all the way across here, okay? We're gonna get the name, the symbol, and then the element, uh, the atomic number. So let's do one line together. So the first one was sodium. The symbol was Na. And then the atomic number was, I think it's 11. Yep, it's 11, okay. Next we'll do magnesium, which is 12. Okay, next up was magnesium. The symbol was Mg, and then the atomic number is 12. Okay, we'll do one more together. Okay, so now the period keeps going. We're gonna skip this part right here because it's blank. The next one is aluminum, and it's number 13. Okay, after this, you're gonna write out the rest of these, and it's just good practice for just spelling out the elements properly. Okay, so after this was aluminum, it is AL and it is 13, okay? So please everyone, complete the rest of these. I will probably give you one or two marks for each. One, two, three, four, five. So there's five more left. Actually, I'll probably do one mark per. So this would, would be worth five marks right here, okay? So please complete that and then pa pa pause the video and complete it, okay? Okay, next up, we have elements in group number 13. Okay, so group number 13. So again, I'm going to do one or two with you and then you can do the rest on your own. Okay, so group number 13 is right over here. So it's a column. So we're going to do all these ones right here. Okay, so we'll start off with boron and then we're going to go down and do this last one. Okay, actually, I think what we'll do is one, two, three, four, five of these. Okay, we're not going to do this unnamed one uh, just because it's kind of complicated. And also I know it's updated since since the, the printing of this one. Okay, so we'll do we'll do two of them and you can do three of them on your own. Okay, so boron number five. So boron B atomic number is five. The next one after that was aluminum, which is AL, and then the atomic number was 13, okay? So this next one will be worth three marks right here. So the remainder of these last three, okay? So they don't even want you to do the complicated one at the very bottom anyways, okay? Okay, next up. So please pause the video if you need to and you can finish that off. Okay, now next up, let us um, just finish this off and then th that'll end this video right now, okay? So period two, group 16. So we're gonna look this up, period two, group 16. So period two is here, and then we're gonna go across to group 16, there it is. It's oxygen, number eight. Okay, so the element was oxygen symbol was O, the atomic number is 8. Let's look up also period 3, group 1. Okay, so period 3, group 1, that's sodium, number 11, the symbol is Na. Okay, so sodium, a, the atomic number was 11, okay? So I would like you to do the rest of these as well. So this will also be worth another three. Uh, actually, I'm gonna make these each worth two marks. So I think this is gonna be worth six marks overall here. Okay, the rest of these are worth six marks. Okay, after you've completed the chart, 
answer the following questions about the elements on the chart. Which of these elements is the lightest? Okay, so you're going to look these up and you're going to see which one's atomic number is the smallest. That is the lightest one. You know that it is the lightest because it has the highest or lowest atomic number. So I'm going to leave that for you to do. Okay, this is going to be worth two marks. Um, my video is now 20 minutes, so I'm going to stop this video and continue on. Uh, once you finish off this page, that's good for today, and then you can do a little bit more work tomorrow, the next day, okay? I'm going to post vo both videos right now at the same time. However, you can uh, break it up into two lessons that you do one, one lesson today and then the continuation of the same lesson tomorrow. Okay, take care everyone. Bye-bye.